How's it going guys and thanks for being here, I hope everybody's doing well. So today I have another brand new release from GVM, this is the GVM FS03R and I was looking at the phone here, I thought uh, I had a crack on my iPhone 13 Pro Max here, it looks just like a crack, right? This is actually the picture of the thing here, well that was kind of close, so this is just a picture here. So anyway, so they should actually list the model here, this is why I have the, the thing on my phone here, because every time you search for a GVM product there, they go, I don't know, filmmaking, uh, lighting, RGB, whatever, they don't list the item, like, you know, Canon 1DX Mark III, and then DSLR, da, da, da. you know, they don't do that, so they should actually update the list in there, because if you actually search for this light by GVM, FS03R, nothing's gonna come up because they don't put the actual model of the light there, so go figure. And just so you know, GVM sent me this item for me to test it out here, all my words and opinions are my own, and this video is not sponsored by GVM, and I don't get paid to say anything here. So as you can see here, this is a very tiny little light, don't expect it to be the brightest thing in the world, this is designed for like, you know, close proximity, and on the back here, it just features the uh, power button, and also the USB uh, charging port, which should also be clean and tightly closed, I'll get back to that in a second. So even for a professional fashion applications, what I would personally use this light for is for placing the light behind something to do a little glow in the wall or some background like that, or even place it in the office as an emergency kind of a hair light or anything like that. So this actually is fully magnetic, so you can actually place it anywhere. This light not only features a daylight, but it is also capable of being RGB and also the same effects that you find in the other GVM panels. They make the effects are identical, so they're all built in here. The only disadvantage with this light here on CCT is that it uses the RGB, it kind of borrows its uh, warm lamps to actually simulate tungsten light. So in this case here, this is not a RGB AW, this is a RGBW only. So the tungsten here is mostly used for like effect because it's gonna cast a little goldy rosy kind of effect, so it's not anything near tungsten, but the daylight here is actually very good and very efficient, and also the RGB and some effects of course. But the tungsten, keep in mind that you're gonna be having to kind of a, a fake a little tungsten for, for looks or something, but not actually to be actually used as tungsten source. And this light is also a Bluetooth capable app, it's no longer a Wi-Fi, which means your phone is free from sending and receiving data, because back in the days, the Wi-Fi system that GVM used to make here, your internet is stuck with the uh, lights internet or Wi-Fi if you will, so no emails, no messages come through your phone, not anymore, so with the Bluetooth does not get in the way with the functionality of your phone. So everything comes in email, YouTube, unless of course you mute the phone or silence or whatever. And as you can see, also features a quarter 20 thread on the bottom here, so you can actually mount the light on the stand or a little ball mount, whatever you want to do to tilt the light. But actually, this light can be actually very useful for those purposes as well. So if you want to do a little camping, that is also great for providing a little light there while you're reading a book or on the uh, sitting somewhere outside, uh, you know, with a little barbecue or like a marshmallow thing going on. This light can actually be very useful, especially that it is actually waterproof. So if it falls in the water or swimming with the light, you can do that. So here's one of the cool little things about this light. Not only features a magazine in the back here, but it also features a IP68 rating waterproof. So the IP stands for ingress protection. The six is dust tight and the eight survives being submerged in water to 1.5 meters deep normally for 30 minutes. What does the IP68 mean? So the eight at the end means the device has been tested at depth more than one meter and found to be unharmed. And while the uh, standard testing here, so it doesn't specifically mention an exact depth. So for instance, Apple says it's IP68 rated for the iPhone 12 can actually survive being up to six meters deep for up to 30 minutes. But don't think that you can actually go in the ocean, dive like, you know, 60 meters deep and expect this light to be like, you know, working underwater like that. This is not what the uh, IP68 mean. And on the front of the light here, there's a little reflector there to help to project the light further. And on the very front here, this plastic cover here has a little texture to help uh, to even out the light even a little bit more. So when you uh, actually aim the light right here, it actually shines pretty evenly. I don't see any hot spots there, which by the way, you can actually control the brightness manually on the back here. So it goes from one, uh, let me see here, right here. So one, two, three, four, five, and then back to one. So this is all you can do pretty much without the app. When you actually use the app, you can actually unlock everything, the uh, CCT, the RGB, and the effects and all. I actually bite my nails, so I would always need the tool to actually open this USB here because I will never be able to do that unless I have a utility knife or something to actually peel this off here. So if you have uh, existing nails in your hand, you shouldn't have a problem with this here. But again, 
Make sure this USB port is clean at all times and also to keep it like shut very properly and very tightly, otherwise water will get in here. This light comes shipped with a regular GVM box like any other small product does, but no case. And also, of course, you're gonna find the light there. And a USB mini, it's not a USB-C, it's a regular USB and also a little lanyard here for you to actually insert it right here to carry it like this way here, right? And also the little uh, shoe mount here you can also mount in a stand like this here or even, even add a ball mount here. And I actually found this case on Amazon here. So this measures about seven inches this way by five and about three inches in height. So I actually took advantage of the actual uh, packaging side here. So when you actually uh, put the light away, you can actually insert the light back here, the cables here and the lanyard goes right here. And this case, they are very inexpensive. And I'm not sure if I still have the link because I bought this case a long time ago. I will try to leave it in the description here. All I have to do is search on Amazon for an EVA type case. And you look at the measurements there, whatever case says, you know, five by seven by three, but no bigger than that, because this one here, it actually, it's almost too big. So as you can see, it looks like this inside here. I have to put a little foam here. Here's a light on the back over there. It's about a meter away from the uh, semi-gray projection screen there. So it's not really a white background, just so you know, it's like a gray finish. That's why it's not white, but anyway. So let's launch the uh, GVM2 app right here, which is actually Bluetooth. And it connects instantly, as you can see. Just click in here, boom, the thing connects instantly. And then you can actually uh, adjust the brightness from nothing to uh, 1% all the way to 100% uh, here. And like I said before, this is a RGB W light. It doesn't feature the tungsten. So when you actually go from um, this temperature here all the way to uh, 2000 degrees Kelvin, it's like a warm light, but you're not really looking at a tungsten. So anything below 4200 degrees Kelvin it's not going to be that accurate, just so you know. So for effects or a warm kind of footage, yeah, you can go all the way down here, which looks good. So let me turn off the slides here a little bit. The only way to access the RGB, for example, here is through the app only because that button there only allows you to access the daylight bulb only. So here's the HSI and it behaves just like any other GVM panel here, but it is not as, uh, as a stepless as the other light. So there's a little bit of a rough edge here, as you can see here, but it's not really a big deal because unless you want to record with the light doing this here, but usually I said, just set this light to this particular color here and let it be. So this is actually not bothering me at all here. And the channels, they don't matter. Whatever channel they choose here, the light is still going to work. Next page is the scene, which is the same lightning effects that you find on any other GVM light. And here's the cop car, the candle light. This needs a little bit of improvement, but you know, these effects are here, I would say a little bit for fun, I guess, but nothing too critical. And here's the bad bulb and the party, which we can actually adjust the cycle here, the delay, and then the disco here, and finally the paparazzi. And then my scenes here, you can actually record the scene that you want. For example, you can go back to the uh, HSI here, select like 200, with the brightness of like 89%. And then you click on the top right here with this diskette mode here. You can actually name to whatever, like RGB one, save. Then you can go back to the CCT here, do whatever you want with the slide, whatever. And then when you hit my scene, the effect goes directly to the uh, 200 that you saved here with the 88 or 89% brightness. And that's all it is. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but I believe I showed you enough what this app can do. And just so you know, when you quit the app here and it decides to power off the light and power on again, it will always come back to the regular CCT at brightness level one. And manually again, there are five levels of brightness from one to five. Right now I have the light here manually being set and right now I'm shooting with the Canon 24 to 105 which is a rather dark lens, it's an f4 lens natively as the widest aperture and the ISO is 800 and the shutter is 1 75th of a second. So here's the light at minimum power at our arm's reach right here. One, two, three, four, five. Of course you're not gonna be using this light as a key light but unless you're camping or something like that, put a little diffuser in front here. But I'm just showing you the power of this light here, which is not that powerful, but it can actually be very useful, especially if you're actually glowing stuff in the background there, something like that, right? And now is with the app here. So the brightness is zero, and then a little bit here, and a full blast. And on HSI, 
looks like this here and toning down the brightness to the minimum setting it looks like this here that's 50 percent and 100 percent so you can get a little bit of brightness out of this thing here but nothing too crazy but it's actually useful especially that it has a magnet in the back plus it is submersible in water so while you're still using the app here even if you turn the light completely to off position here, you can still come back here on the back of the light and actually use the light while the application is running. So one, two, three, four, five, back to one here, or you can come back to the app and resume from here. Once you set it to HSI, for example, let's see what happens here. So I have the light on red, for example, and then you can still operate the light from here and go back to the app when you want. So right now I'm at 5600 degrees Kelvin comparing to the colors of the actual Godox SL60W. So, you know, you probably will have to dial down a little bit here as far as my eyeball can see there. It's hard to see a 7-inch monitor what's going on, but at 56 this is a slightly cooler. And my soft boxes here, they are not dirty. It's very clean white, but still, as soon as you put a modifier here, you will be actually... Uh, changing the color temperature to at least 100 degrees Kelvin with a brand new salt box. So keep that in mind. If you have the bare bulb here, the 5600 degrees Kelvin that's coming out of the slide here, it's going to be more accurate than any modifier that you actually place in here. With that said, let's uh, do a little adjustment here. So I don't know, maybe 5000, it looks decent as far as the, comparing the colors with one another here. And anything below 4200 degrees Kelvin or 43, you're going to start to enter the warm zone, but it has nothing to do with tungsten light, just so you know. It's just a warm light, which utilizes the RGB diodes here to make a tungsten. So there are no tungsten diodes or LED bulbs present in this light. Same thing with the uh, first edition of the GVM 50RS and the uh, GVM S110 is an RGB panel. It does not feature the uh, tungsten RGBs as well. It's just daylight and RGB. Same thing with this light here. Now, if you want to use the magnet here, make sure the USB port is completely closed because one little millimeter that's open, it's going to actually weaken the magnet feature here because these magnets, they are not really strong. So again, you need to be actually making sure this USB is fully shut here. So when you actually put on a flat metal surface, it will actually stick. Now, if you're actually using this light on a surface that actually either vibrates or moves or shakes or whatever, do not attempt to use the magnet feature because this light is going to fall and it's probably going to hurt some expensive object that you might have uh, you know when the light falls right there I have a center channel speaker there that will severely get damaged if I attempt to put this light on my projection uh, screen uh, rail right there on top there it's probably gonna fall but since nothing vibrates there I can actually place it over there and it's gonna be safe to use this light because I know it's not gonna fall now depending on the situation here if you're looking for something critical you might have to flag which means placing a, a dark thing like a dark blanket or a flag like you know what a flag is I hope and then to control the light here, otherwise it's going to be actually spilling on a projector. So if I place this light right there, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. So as you can see, you can cast a little bit of a unwanted light right there. So all you have to do is to flag the light and it should be good to go. Here's what a flag is. I have a miniature here. They will actually cut unwanted light spill and this is what these things are for. Then you mount this on a stand here to actually position the flag in whatever way you want and you're good to go. But anything related to hair light or rim light, you will have to bring this light at least one meter close to you because over there, it's not going to even touch you right here. I'm going to actually turn the lights off here. As you can see, it's not going to do anything whatsoever. So you actually have to be close to the light and then it will work. And here's a little cinematography tip for you regarding audio. So as you can see, I don't use a shotgun indoors because shotguns are mostly designed for using outdoors because the standing waves or any sound waves that bounce off this wall, see, including the projection screen right there, it's going to hit the side of the shotgun microphone, causing unwanted sounds, which I actually avoid at all costs fixing any audio in post-production. So everything that you hear here, I don't touch it except for equalization and normalization and a little bit of a compression. Other than that, is the actual sound that you hear and of course the closer the microphone is to your mouth every single inch count for 
order like this here because as soon as you do this here you notice that the order is not as clear or it's not as good because you're gonna have to actually up the master on your recorder to actually bring the sound up to this here which means more sound and unwanted noise is actually introduced to the mic the closer you are to the microphone the less possibility of background noise is introduced because the sound pressure of your mouth is so high that it's going to be canceling out every unwanted uh, noise background noise coming into the microphone so always place the microphone as close as possible to the source every single inch that i can actually lower this microphone here i will do everything that i can so it can happen and for audio i use the sound devices mix pre 6 which it has a fantastic pre amplifier so the sound is ultra clear even with the uh, dynamic microphone which tends to be a little hissy sometimes the pre amplifier on this thing here is going to make a dynamic microphone sound like a condenser microphone highly recommend this unit here so for YouTube here, the setup is actually very simple and that's all we really need. I have my RGB light shining a little light in the background there. Here's my key light right there. And this is just a little tiny bit of a feel here. This light is actually a 10% as low as it will go. And this one here is actually a 34% right here. And I use this microphone right here and that's all it takes for a YouTube set right here. The battery here, if you treat it well, it's going to last about one and a half hours every time. Don't let the battery die completely because this is actually the ultimate recipe to actually damage and exhaust your cells to the point that they will never be able to recover. And also, here's the iPhone Pro Max here. This is an expensive phone and the battery is actually fantastic here. But every time they use a supercharger that charges the phone in four minutes to 80% or whatever, you are actually destroying the battery. So later on, when you see your battery... Uh, analysis here on the uh, thing inside the phone here you'll notice that this battery is no longer the same so if you use overnight as a trickle charger here with the regular one percent slow charger is actually the best thing that you can do to your battery so overnight charge this phone really slow same exact thing with the slide here don't kill it with a three amp charger because you're actually going to kill the battery so what I'm trying to say here, this battery takes longer than an hour and a half, close to two, two and a half hours to charge and just charge respecting the time that the battery needs to be charged. So that's all I got to say here. So that's the end of my review. I hope you found the contents of this video helpful. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. If you want to give me a thumbs up, that tells me that I'm doing a good job here. And if you want to comment anything down in the comment section there, I respond to everything that I see there. So thank you again for watching this video and I'll see you next time.